I stared in disbelief as my ex-husband Baxter sauntered through the doors of the community center, his new fiancée Lola clinging to his arm. The air in the room suddenly felt stifling, and my grip tightened on the flyer I had been distributing for my small business. This was the last place I wanted to run into them. Baxter's gaze swept the room until it landed on me, a smug grin spreading across his face. Well, well, if it isn't my dear ex-wife, Evangeline, fancy seeing you here. He had the audacity to chuckle, as if this was all some big joke. I took a deep breath, forcing myself to remain composed. Baxter? Lola? I acknowledged them with a curt nod, my eyes narrowing slightly. What are you doing here? Can't a man and his future wife enjoy a night out in our quaint little town? Baxter drawled, his arm tightening around Lola's waist. Or is that too much to ask? Lola glanced up at Baxter, her brow furrowed in confusion. Baxter, who is this woman? she asked, her voice laced with uncertainty. Baxter let out a dramatic sigh. Lola, darling, this is Evangeline, my ex-wife, the one I told you about, remember? He turned to me, his gaze hardening, the one who tried to bleed me dry in our divorce. I felt the heat rise to my cheeks, and I had to resist the urge to slap that arrogant smirk off his face. "'That's not how I remember it, Baxter,' I retorted, my voice sharp. "'As I recall, it was you who refused to pay a single dime in alimony, thanks to that prenuptial agreement you forced me to sign.' Baxter's eyes narrowed, and I could see the fury bubbling just beneath the surface. "'Ah, yes, the prenup, the one that saved me from your greedy clutches.' He leaned in, his breath tickling my ear. Face it, Evangeline, you got nothing out of that marriage, and you never will. I clenched my jaw, my nails digging into the palms of my hands. How dare he stand there and mock me, as if our entire marriage had been nothing but a farce. You may have won that battle, Baxter, but mark my words, I'm not done fighting. I glanced at Lola, my heart aching for the young woman who was clearly unaware of Baxter's true nature. You may have found a new plaything, but I won't let you hurt my son the way you hurt me. Baxter let out a loud, grating laugh. Your son? Please, Theo, is as much mine as he is yours, and as for hurting him, well, that's your own fault for being such a lousy mother. He leaned in closer, his voice lowering to a menacing whisper. If you know what's good for you, you'll stay out of my way, Evangeline. This is my life now, and I'm not about to let you ruin it. With that, he turned on his heel, Lola trailing behind him, her expression a mix of confusion and concern. I watched them go, my heart racing with a familiar mix of anger and helplessness. Baxter may have won the battle, but I was far from done. I would fight for my dignity, my son, and my future, no matter the cost. The drive home from the community center was tense, the silence in the car thick with unspoken emotions. I could feel Theo's eyes on me, his brow furrowed with concern. Mom, are you okay? he asked, his voice soft. I forced a small smile, reaching over to give his hand a gentle squeeze. I'm fine, sweetheart. Just caught off guard, that's all. Theo's expression darkened. I can't believe he had the nerve to show up here with that woman, and the way he talked to you. His jaw clenched, and I could see the anger simmering in his eyes. I know, honey, but we can't let him get to us. I took a deep breath, steadying my nerves. Baxter may have won the battle with that prenup, but I'm not about to let him win the war. What are you going to do? Theo asked, his voice tinged with a mixture of hope and trepidation. I pressed my lips into a thin line, my mind racing. I'm not sure yet, but I'm not giving up without a fight. That prenup may have left me with nothing, but maybe there's a way to challenge it. Theo's eyes widened. You mean you're going to take him to court again? I nodded, my grip tightening on the steering wheel. I have to, Theo. I can't let him continue to walk all over me, or you. He needs to be held accountable for his actions. Theo was silent for a moment, then he reached out and placed his hand on my arm. I'm with you, Mom. Whatever you decide to do, I'm here for you. I felt a surge of pride and love for my son, my heart swelling with gratitude. Thank you, Theo. I knew I could count on you. I smiled, feeling a renewed sense of determination. Now, let's go home and see what we can dig up on that prenup of ours. As I sat at my desk— Pouring over the stack of documents related to my divorce, a sense of frustration and bitterness welled up inside me. Baxter had been a master manipulator, using his wealth and power to tip the scales in his favor. 
That prenuptial agreement had been the bane of my existence, leaving me with nothing after years of marriage and a lifetime of memories. There has to be something we're missing, I muttered, running a hand through my hair in frustration. Baxter couldn't have been that clever. Theo leaned forward, his eyes scanning the documents. What about this clause here? he said, pointing to a paragraph of dense legal jargon. It looks like it might have a loophole. I squinted, my brow furrowing as I read through the fine print. You know, you might be onto something. This section seems a bit vague. A spark of hope ignited within me, and I felt a surge of determination. Theo, call Jasmine. I think it's time we take another look at this prenup. Theo grinned, already reaching for his phone. I'll get right on it, Mom. Let's show Baxter who he's messing with. As Theo made the call, I allowed myself a small smile. Baxter may have thought he had me beat, but I was just getting started. This was my chance to reclaim my life, and I wasn't about to let it slip through my fingers. The next few days were a whirlwind of activity as Theo and I worked tirelessly with Jasmine, my trusted lawyer, to uncover the truth behind Baxter's prenuptial agreement. It was a meticulous process, sifting through mountains of financial records and legal documents, but I was determined to leave no stone unturned. Jasmine's sharp eye and keen legal expertise were invaluable as we began to piece together the puzzle. It's all starting to make sense now, she said, her brow furrowed in concentration. Baxter used some very clever and underhanded tactics to conceal his assets during the divorce proceedings. I felt a surge of anger course through me, my hands clenching into fists. I knew he was a snake, but this? This is a whole new level of deceit. Theo placed a reassuring hand on my shoulder. Don't worry, Mom. We're going to make him pay for this. Jasmine nodded, her expression grim. Absolutely. We've got more than enough evidence to challenge the validity of that prenup. Now it's just a matter of getting it in front of a judge. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the battle ahead. Then let's do it. I'm ready to show Baxter that he can't get away with this. As we prepared to present our case in court, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of trepidation. Baxter had always been a formidable adversary, and I knew he wouldn't go down without a fight. Sure enough, when we arrived at the courthouse, Baxter was already there, flanked by his team of high-powered attorneys. He shot me a smug grin as I passed by, and I had to resist the urge to wipe it off his face. Well, well, if it isn't my ex-wife, the financial genius, Baxter drawled, his voice dripping with sarcasm. I must say, I'm impressed that you managed to dredge up all this... evidence. He let out a derisive laugh. But you and your little team of misfits are no match for my legal juggernaut. I clenched my jaw, refusing to be intimidated. We'll see about that, Baxter. This time the truth is on our side. Jasmine stepped forward, her eyes narrowing. Mr. Wright... I'd advise you to take this matter seriously. The evidence we've uncovered is more than enough to invalidate that prenuptial agreement. Baxter scoffed, his gaze sweeping dismissively over Jasmine. Oh, please. Do you really think a two-bit lawyer like you can outmaneuver my team of legal experts? This is going to be a cakewalk. Theo stepped up beside me, his expression determined. Don't underestimate us, Baxter. We're not going to let you get away with this anymore. Baxter's eyes darkened, and for a moment I saw a flicker of uncertainty cross his features, but it was gone as quickly as it had appeared, replaced by a cold, calculating gaze. "'We'll see about that, Theo,' he said, his voice low and menacing. "'This time I'm going to make sure you and your mother lose everything.' With that, he turned and strode into the courtroom, his lawyers trailing behind him. I felt a chill run down my spine— but I refused to let Baxter's threat shake my resolve. I had come too far to back down now. Jasmine placed a reassuring hand on my arm. Don't worry, Eva. We're going to make him pay for his lies and deceit. This time justice is on our side. I nodded, taking a deep breath. Then let's do this. As the court proceedings unfolded, I watched with a mix of trepidation and anticipation. Jasmine and her team presented our evidence with precision and conviction slowly but surely chipping away at the carefully crafted facade that Baxter had built around his financial empire. Witness after witness took the stand, each one adding a new layer of complexity to the narrative. Employees, business partners, and even a few of Baxter's former associates came forward, testifying to his underhanded tactics and dubious accounting practices. Baxter, in turn, 
fought viciously, unleashing his team of high-priced lawyers in a relentless effort to discredit our witnesses and cast doubt on the evidence. But with each passing day, it became increasingly clear that his defenses were crumbling. One particularly pivotal moment came when a former accountant, a man named Gerald, took the stand. His testimony was damning, was revealing a complex web of offshore accounts and shell companies that Baxter had used to hide his assets during our divorce. Mr. Wright would regularly instruct me to falsify financial records and divert funds to untraceable accounts, Gerald stated, his voice steady and unwavering. It was all part of an elaborate scheme to ensure that he wouldn't have to pay a single dime in alimony or child support. The courtroom erupted in a murmur of shock and disbelief, and I couldn't help but feel a surge of vindication. Baxter's face had turned a deep shade of red, his knuckles white as he gripped the edge of the table in front of him. "'Objection, Your Honor!' one of Baxter's lawyers shouted, jumping to his feet. "'This witness is clearly biased, and his testimony is nothing more than hearsay.' The judge, however, remained unswayed. Overruled. The witness's testimony is relevant and admissible. She turned her stern gaze towards Baxter. Mr. Soutright, you would do well to refrain from any further outbursts. Baxter's jaw clenched, and I could see the rage simmering behind his eyes. But he remained silent, his shoulders stiff as he sank back into his chair. As the proceedings continued, the tide began to turn against Baxter. The media coverage of the case had grown increasingly intense, with reporters digging into his past and uncovering a trail of shady business dealings and unethical practices. Suddenly, the once untouchable Baxter Wright found himself the target of public scrutiny and outrage. His business ventures began to crumble as investors and partners sought to distance themselves from the growing scandal. This is a disaster, Baxter growled, pacing back and forth in the courthouse hallway. How could this be happening? I couldn't help but feel a small twinge of satisfaction as I watched him unravel. Maybe if you hadn't spent so much time trying to deceive everyone, this wouldn't be happening, I replied, my voice laced with a hint of, smug of smugness. Baxter's eyes narrowed, and he stepped closer, his finger jabbing the air in front of my face. This isn't over, Evangeline. I'm going to make you and that pathetic son of ours pay for this. I stood my ground, refusing to be intimidated. Go ahead and try, Baxter. But this time, the truth is on our side. With that, I turned and walked away, leaving Baxter to stew in his own anger and frustration. As I rejoined Theo and Jasmine, I couldn't help but feel a sense of renewed hope. The tides were turning, and the road to justice was finally in sight. As the trial progressed, the noose around Baxter's neck tightened with each passing day. The evidence we had uncovered thanks to Jasmine's tireless efforts painted a damning portrait of his deceitful and manipulative behavior. One particularly significant development came when we stumbled upon a complex scheme Baxter had orchestrated to hide assets during our divorce. Jasmine and her team worked tirelessly, combing through financial records and tracing a tangled web of offshore accounts and shell companies. This is it, Eva, Jasmine said, her eyes sparkling with triumph. We've got him dead to rights. The court is going to have no choice but to invalidate that prenup. I felt a surge of relief and anticipation, but also a tinge of apprehension. Are you sure, Jasmine? Baxter has always been able to wriggle his way out of these kinds of situations. Jasmine nodded, her expression resolute. Absolutely. The evidence is ironclad. Baxter's little game of financial hide-and-seek is about to catch up with him. I couldn't help but feel a sense of cautious optimism. After years of being on the defensive, the tables were finally turning. Baxter's arrogance and overconfidence had been his undoing, and I was more than ready to see him reap the consequences of his actions. As we returned to the courthouse for the next round of proceedings, I could feel the tension in the air. Baxter and his team of lawyers were visibly on edge, their faces etched with a mixture of frustration and desperation. Jasmine wasted no time in presenting our findings, her voice clear and confident as she laid out the details of Baxter's elaborate scheme. The courtroom was silent, save for the occasional gasp of shock and disbelief as the magnitude of Baxter's deception became increasingly clear. Baxter, for his part, tried to remain composed, but his usual swagger and bravado had been replaced by a thinly-veiled panic. 
When Jasmine finally concluded her presentation, he rose to his feet, his face flushed with anger. "'Objection, Your Honor!' he shouted, his voice trembling. "'This is all a fabrication, a desperate attempt to smear my reputation and take what is rightfully mine.' The judge, however, remained unmoved. "'Sit down, Mr. Wright, or I will have you held in contempt of court.' She turned her gaze to Jasmine, her expression grave. "'Miss Lee, the evidence you've presented is quite compelling. I will need some time to review it thoroughly, but it appears that the prenuptial agreement may indeed be invalid.' Baxter's face contorted with rage, and he slammed his fist on the table, causing the courtroom to erupt in a shocked murmur. "'This is an outrage!' he bellowed, his eyes wild. I won't stand for this. Theo, who had been sitting quietly beside me, leaned in and whispered, Looks like the mighty Baxter Wright is finally getting a taste of his own medicine. I couldn't help but agree, a small smile tugging at the corners of my lips. Yes, my dear, I replied, squeezing his hand. It seems karma has finally caught up with him. As the judge adjourned the proceedings for the day, Baxter stormed out of the courtroom, his lawyers trailing behind him like a pack of frenzied vultures. I watched him go, feeling a sense of triumph and relief wash over me. This was a victory, to be sure, but I knew that the battle was far from over. Baxter was a formidable and relentless opponent, and I couldn't afford to let my guard down. Still, in that moment, I allowed myself to bask in the satisfaction of seeing justice begin to prevail. The air in the courtroom was thick with tension as we reconvened for the final showdown with Baxter. Jasmine had assured me that our case was rock-solid, but I couldn't help but feel a twinge of apprehension. Baxter was a master manipulator, and I knew he would stop at nothing to protect his ill-gotten gains. As Baxter strode into the room, his gaze swept across the faces of the judge, the jury, and finally settling on me. His lips curled into a sneer, and I could see the raw fury burning in his eyes. Well, well, if it isn't my dear ex-wife Evangeline, he drawled, his voice dripping with disdain. I must say, I'm impressed that you've managed to drag this circus out for so long. I clenched my jaw, refusing to be baited. Save it, Baxter. Your games are over. Jasmine stepped forward, her expression unwavering. Your Honor, we are prepared to present our final evidence against the validity of the prenuptial agreement between Mr. Wright and Miss Reed. The judge nodded, her gaze stern. Very well, Miss Lee, you may proceed. Jasmine launched into a meticulously detailed presentation, outlining Baxter's elaborate scheme to conceal assets and manipulate the financial records during our divorce proceedings. She called witnesses, presented documents, and systematically dismantled Baxter's defense, leaving him visibly rattled. At one point, Baxter attempted to interrupt, his voice rising in a desperate attempt to discredit the evidence. Objection, Your Honor. This is all a fabrication, a blatant attempt to rob me of what is rightfully mine. The judge, however, remained unfazed. Overruled, Mr. Wright. Ms. Lee's presentation is factual and well substantiated. I would advise you to refrain from further outbursts. Baxter's face flushed with fury, and I could see the veins in his neck pulsing. But he remained silent, his eyes narrowing as he glared at Jasmine. As the presentation drew to a close, Jasmine turned to face the judge, her expression solemn. Your Honor, based on the overwhelming evidence we have presented, we are confident that the prenuptial agreement between Mr. Wright and Ms. Reed is null and void. Baxter Wright's blatant deception and manipulation have rendered the agreement invalid, and we respectfully request that it be set aside. The courtroom erupted in a murmur of anticipation, and I felt Theo's hand squeeze mine his eyes shining with hope. I held my breath, my heart pounding in my chest as the judge considered Jasmine's words. After what felt like an eternity, the judge cleared her throat, her gaze sweeping across the room. Having carefully reviewed the evidence presented by Miss Lee, I find that the prenuptial agreement between Mr. Wright and Miss Reed is indeed invalid. Baxter Wright's fraudulent actions and concealment of assets have rendered the agreement null and void the courtroom erupted in a thunderous applause, and I felt a surge of relief and triumph wash over me. Theo pulled me into a tight hug. His voice choked with emotion. We did it, Mom, he exclaimed. We finally beat him. I held my son close, tears of joy streaming down my face. Yes, Theo, we did. Justice has finally been served. As I turned to face Baxter, I saw the true depth of his defeat. 
His face was ashen, his shoulders slumped in defeat. For once, the man who had always seemed untouchable was finally being held accountable for his actions. "'This isn't over, Evangeline,' he snarled, his voice trembling with rage. "'I'll make you pay for this, mark my words.' I met his gaze, unflinching. "'No, Baxter, this time it is over. Your reign of deceit and manipulation has come to an end.' With that, I turned and walked away, knowing that I had finally reclaimed the power he had taken from me all those years ago. In the aftermath of the court's ruling, Baxter's once formidable empire began to crumble at an alarming rate. The public scrutiny and legal repercussions of his fraudulent activities had a devastating impact on his business ventures and personal life. I watched with a mixture of satisfaction and pity as Baxter's world came tumbling down around him. His fiancée, Lola, was the first to abandon ship, her eyes filled with a betrayal that cut him deeper than any legal setback. "'How could you do this, Baxter?' she cried, her voice laced with a raw, emotional pain. "'All this time I thought you were this successful, upstanding businessman. But you're just a liar and a cheat.' Baxter for once was rendered speechless, his usual bravado nowhere to be found. He stood there, his shoulders slumped, as Lola gathered her belongings and stormed out of their shared apartment. I couldn't help but feel a twinge of sympathy for the young woman, despite the animosity I held towards Baxter. She had been an unwitting pawn in his twisted game, and I knew all too well the sting of being betrayed by the person you trusted the most. But my empathy for Lola was quickly overshadowed by the sense of justice being served. Baxter's business ventures— once a source of his immense wealth and power, began to crumble under the weight of the revelations that had come to light during the court proceedings. Investors and partners, once loyal to Baxter, now scrambled to distance themselves from the tainted empire he had built. Lawsuits and investigations piled up, and Baxter found himself facing the very real prospect of financial ruin. "'This is all your fault, Evangeline,' he snarled, cornering me outside the courthouse one day. If you had just left well enough alone, I could have continued living in peace. I met his gaze, unflinching. This is the consequence of your own greed and deceit, Baxter. You brought this upon yourself. He let out a frustrated growl, his hands clenching into fists at his sides. I'll make you pay for this, mark my words. I'll take everything from you, your business, your son, your pathetic excuse for a life. I couldn't help but feel a pang of fear at his words but I refuse to let it show. Threatening me won't do you any good, Baxter. The damage has been done, and you have no one to blame but yourself. With that, I turned and walked away, leaving him to stew in his own rage and despair. As I rejoined Theo and Jasmine, I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. It's over, Theo, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Baxter's reign of terror is finally coming to an end. Theo wrapped his arms around me and I could feel the tension in his body slowly dissipate. I'm so proud of you, Mom. You never gave up, and now we can finally move on with our lives. I nodded, a small smile tugging at the corners of my lips. Yes, my dear. And not only that, but I believe it's time we do something to help those who were wronged by Baxter's misdeeds. Jasmine, who had been listening quietly, stepped forward, her eyes shining with understanding. I think that's an excellent idea, Eva. We have the means to make a real difference in the lives of those Baxter has hurt. As we began to formulate a plan to use my settlement to support Baxter's other victims, I couldn't help but feel a sense of renewed purpose. Baxter's downfall had been a long and arduous journey, but in the end justice had prevailed, and now it was time to ensure that his legacy of greed and deceit would never be forgotten. As the dust settled on Baxter's downfall, I found myself standing at a crossroads, unsure of where to go next. The settlement I had received from the invalidated prenup had given me a newfound financial freedom, but the journey to get there had left me feeling drained and uncertain. Theo, however, was brimming with excitement, his eyes shining with hope for the future. Mom, this is our chance to start over. We can do anything we want now. I couldn't help but smile at his infectious enthusiasm. You're right, Theo, but I have to admit I'm not quite sure where to begin. Jasmine, ever the pragmatic advisor, stepped in with a reassuring smile. Well, Eva, I think the first step is to take a breath and really consider what you want to do with this opportunity. This settlement isn't just about you, 
It's about building a better future for you and Theo. I nodded, her words resonating with me. You're absolutely right. I want to make sure we do this the right way, without falling into the same traps Baxter did. Theo reached out and squeezed my hand, his expression earnest. Whatever you decide, Mom, I'm with you. We're in this together. I felt a swell of pride and gratitude for my son, his unwavering support, a constant source of strength. Thank you, Theo. I couldn't have done this without you. After much deliberation, Theo and I decided to use a portion of the settlement to expand my small business, finally giving it the resources it needed to thrive. Jasmine assisted us in navigating the legal and financial aspects, ensuring that we were making wise, sustainable choices. The rest of the settlement, however, was set aside for a more altruistic purpose. Inspired by the resilience and determination I had shown in my own battle against Baxter, I decided to establish a foundation to support other single mothers in our community. This is an incredible idea, Eva, Jasmine said, her eyes shining with approval. You've been through so much, and now you have the opportunity to help others who are in a similar position. I nodded, a sense of purpose filling me. Exactly. Baxter's actions hurt so many people, and I want to make sure that his legacy doesn't continue to haunt others. The this foundation is my way of reclaiming my story and using it to empower women like me. Theo gave my arm a gentle squeeze, his smile warm and proud. I think it's an amazing idea, Mom. You're going to change so many lives with this. As we worked tirelessly to bring the foundation to life, I couldn't help but feel a sense of peace and fulfillment. It was as if the darkness that had once clouded my life was slowly but surely being replaced by a renewed sense of hope and purpose. And then one day, as I was finalizing the details of the Foundation's mission and programs, I received an unexpected call. It was Baxter, his voice uncharacteristically subdued. Evangeline, he began, his words laced with a hint of desperation. I, I need your help. I hesitated, unsure of how to respond. After all the pain and suffering he had caused, a part of me wanted to simply hang up the phone and never speak to him again. But something in his tone gave me pause. What is it, Baxter? I asked, my voice cautious. I, I've lost everything, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. My businesses, my investments, my reputation, it's all gone. I have nothing left. I felt a twinge of pity, despite myself. I see. I paused, considering my next words carefully. What do you expect me to do about it? Baxter let out a defeated sigh. I know I don't deserve it, but... I was hoping you might be willing to spare some of your settlement to help the others I've hurt. I need to make amends, Evangeline. I need to make this right. I was taken aback by his request, the sincerity in his voice something I had never witnessed before. For a moment, I was silent, weighing my options. Finally, I spoke, my voice steady. Very well, Baxter. I'll see what I can do. As I hung up the phone, I couldn't help but feel a sense of closure. Baxter's fall from grace had been swift and unforgiving, but in the end, it seemed that even he had found the humility to seek redemption. With a renewed sense of purpose, I turned my attention back to the Foundation, determined to ensure that my story would not be defined by Baxter's betrayal, but by the triumph of resilience and compassion.